Hello folks, Jason Chrisman here, JC's Bees, and today we're going to rate some hives. That's right, and I'm very excited to share these, these colonies with you today. Um, yeah, I'm sitting inside with my ball gun on. Not something I practice, but I'm trying to prevent my content from being stolen, so if somebody wants to use this content with my name across my head, good luck trying to... Uh, what are you going to do? Move me up so we cut it off? That's probably what they'll do. They'll move me up like that, and they'll still be able to use the content. But hey, I'm trying here, folks. Trying to protect my content. At the end of this video, I'll explain how you can submit your own photo and description, and you could be included in this series, which I plan to release one video a month of until winter's over. And I will not be giving out names. It's up to the individual to leave their name in the comments below and say, hey, the first or the second or the third one, that was my setup. If uh, you feel inclined to do so, go at it. Oh, and please remember, in the real beekeeping world, my rating system means nothing. Mother Nature, well, she's in control, so don't think that my rating system guarantees anything. This is all for fun, maybe to help you make a local connection with somebody in your region that can give you some pointers, and we can all learn from each other's setup, right? That's what this is all about. Okay, right out the gate. Location, central Minnesota. Average winter temps, 0 to 20 degrees. Um, occasionally, they do see minus 30 degrees. Damn, that's cold. Let me tell you, folks, that is cold. Estimated food stores, 150 pounds. Desired food stores, 165 pounds for a double deep 10 frame colony. Okay, in this picture, there are five 10 frame double deeps, one six frame, which has two deeps and a super, one five frame, which has two deeps and a super. Seven hives total, that's what we're looking at here. All are pushed tight together for winter and half inch sheet of insulation on the backside and two ends. Now that's a good way to stop the, the cold air. All hives have a quilting box on top using wood shavings for insulation and air vents. Upper entrance is 3 eighths of an inch by 3 quarters on all hives. Front entrance, and I'm going to say that he means front lower entrance, doesn't specify. Front entrance, all have a reduced entrance, 3 eighths by 4 for a mouse guard. Okay, so he's just reduced the entrance for a mouse guard, no actual mouse guard installed. Hives are surrounded by a wooden fence and the garage wall for wind protection and privacy. Bees are illegal in my town. Once spring comes, most of the bees will go to a different yard in the countryside. My bees don't get out until late March for cleansing flights. Um, he's guessing there's about five months that the bees are in torpor. Okay, so first of all, I want to say I like the unique look of all of your hives. Um, looks like you've taken a little bit of time to come up with these different patterns. And uh, I'm going to guess that you're trying to reduce drifting. And that's why you're playing with the different patterns. Like I see the one colony has three white lines at an angle. And then right below it on the entrance board, it's got a little white space, a red space, or white, red, white, it's all the way across. So that's a very unique hive, and I would think um, something like that would help stop drifting in the summer when bees are foraging. Um, it's a way for a bee to identify which colony they came from. And I also like, I come on down here to this uh, nuke that's close to the uh, front of the picture here. It's got a white nuke on the bottom. And I like the fact that you made your own little uh, uh, way to block the bees in. I see a little piece of wood with a screw going through it. Looks like you can flip it down and block the entrance. Very creative. But anyway, let me get on to the big likes here and uh, we'll move on. Um, I like that you've got upper entrances. Um, I like that you slid them tight together to share heat and then wrapped with insulation 
so there's no uh, drafts. Kind of keep the cold air off the bees. Good thinking. Um, I like the quilting box to control moisture. Very good. I also like that you've got them placed between your garage and your wood fence. Um, not only for the wind block, but so that people in town don't realize this dude's got bees in his backyard. Oh my God, what's the matter with him? He's got bees in his backyard. Crazy guy. Um, I kind of like, you know, I, I ain't going to say that I like that you're breaking the law, and I ain't going to, you know, encourage that by any means, but I do like that you, you have something that you want, being the bees, and you're not going to let your town tell you that you can't have them. Um, I happen to know this fellow because he's a, a Patreon supporter of mine. I ain't gonna mention any names, as I've already mentioned in this video. There will be no names. Um, but I know that his, bee, his bees grew, his numbers grew a lot faster than what he expected. So I don't think he, he planned to have this many colonies going into winter. Matter of fact, I'm pretty darn sure of it. So, my dislikes and concerns. Um, your mouse guard. Um, reducing the entrance is a good thing, but at the same time, I'd like to see either some rabbit wire, um, a metal mouse guard of some sort over those. And, and the reason being is I've seen mice take a little 3 8 entrance and sit there on the entrance board and chew a hole and make that little 3 8 entrance now a half inch hole all the way through the entrance so the mouse can mice can get in and out so it's just a little bit of extra security um, I see you've got some snow there on your colonies um, if the snow would get deep enough and I don't know what your average snowfall is but if the snow would get deep enough that it came up over those lower entrances there's a pretty good chance that mice would also get up there on them entrances our landing boards and they would be able to go over like I said and make that hole a lot bigger and uh, you think you did everything right all that work you've put into these getting them ready for winter it just takes one mouse one mouse to go and chew a hole in one of them entrances and make it big so it can enter and that colony is doomed because the mouse will go in there um, the bees are clustered, so they're not able to protect what they've got. And the mouse is in there just destroying comb. Um, and comb is brittle when it's cold. But the mouse in there, weaving between the frames and climbing up on the comb, it's just falling apart, destroying the inside of that colony. So the best thing you could do is, is get some metal mouse guards on there of some sort. Um, my only other concern is, is the colonies tilted? Um, any moisture that lands on that landing board, is it able to run back in the colony? Or is it going to run off the front and drip on the ground? So that's, that's where we're at with this colony setup. And uh, I tell you, I was real close to giving you um, four out of five hive tools. But I have con some concerns with your mouse guard and whether your colony is tilted. So... That being said, I'm going to give you three hive tools, and just because I'm feeling nice today, I'm also going to give you a ladybug. So you got three hive tools and a ladybug. Yep, ladybug's something I just threw in here. Just starting today. So you're one of the first. Good job. Pat yourself on the back, and maybe think about them things I mentioned for next winter. Okay, moving on to the next colony. Location, Southeast Maryland. Recently moved from Rhode Island. Wow, what a move. Uh, moving sucks, so I can't imagine that. Wow. Good for you, though. Glad you got her done and you're moved in and your bees are set up. Um, temperatures typically range from 15 to 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. Can be extreme in both directions. Weight. The hive is 120 pounds. Suggested weight are about 90 pounds for each 10 frame deep. This hive is a deep and a medium. From what we can see looking at the picture, um, it looks like a deep and one medium, but as he's going to explain here, it's a deep and two mediums. 
So let me get into the hive setup. Okay, hive setup, 10 frame deep and a 10 frame medium, screen bottom board with insert, wood on the back of the insert to reduce drafts. Okay, so his insert covering your screen bottom has uh, a piece of wood on it to keep the, the cool air from making it up in there. Mouse guard with tape covering two thirds to reduce drafts. Deep and medium box are wrapped in reflective double bubble with styrofoam insulation to serve as a wind block and to moderate temperature swings. Inner cover on the top medium with the notch opened. 16 pounds of dry sugar, mountain camp, emergency stores on top of inner cover and surrounded by unwrapped medium. Double bubble inside of medium for insulation, two inches of foam on top under the outer cover, all held together with a ratchet strap. The unwrapped hive is empty, just sitting out for storage. Okay, so what he's got, like I explained, under that double bubble, as he refers to it, he's got a deep and a medium. And then just outside of the double bubble, you can see the inner cover with the notch open, just like he said, and then his medium on top of that, which has a piece of insulation and then the outer cover. So, let me go over some of the things here I like. Uh, mouse guard. I like that you've got a mouse guard, but I have some concerns with that, and I'll discuss that here in a second and my dislikes and concerns. Um, like, I like your effort to stop the wind and to keep the draft off the colony. I like that you have the top notch open as an entrance and a place for uh, moisture to escape. I love that you're using the mountain camp method. That's a great way to control moisture. Um, I also like your ratchet strap to keep the colony tightly sealed together. Um, it's pretty common that we get a lot stronger winds in the winter time and that'll help keep it from toppling over. I also like that you have that piece of insulation underneath the inner cover um, or the outer cover, excuse me, um, to help keep the heat down inside the colony. Okay, my dislikes and concerns. Um, is the colony tilted? Um, is the moisture gonna run out of the colony um, if it lands on the bottom board or is it gonna run back into the colony? Just like on the previous uh, hive setup that I rated, I have some concerns with that. I like to see it tilted so the moisture can wick away from the, in uh, yeah, away from the entrance. The mouse guard, have some concerns with that like I said. Um, is it metal or is it just a reduced entrance? You didn't really specify and I can't really tell from the picture So I have to guess that it's just a reduced entrance and like I mentioned on the last setup um, Have some concerns with that because mice can do so much damage if the opportunity is there and uh, Without the metal mouse guard the opportunity could very well be there um, I have one other concern and I don't have any experience with this, but I do want to bring it to everybody's attention. You see the location of the inner cover sandwiched between the two mediums. One medium being under the double bubble and the other medium being on top. If you're feeding your mountain camp method, or you've got your mountain camp method sugar on top of the inner cover, I have to assume that you have the slot in the middle of your inner cover for moisture to wick up through. Um, I, I say this because I have seen some inner covers that are solid and they only have the notch in the front. There is no hole in the actual center of the inner cover. And without that, there's not going to be any way for moisture to get up to the sugar. Um, I also have some concerns with the inner cover placement. Um, in my mind, that inner cover should be on top of the top medium with newspaper for the dry sugar to set on and my thought is it's a lot easier for the moisture to come up between the frames and the collecting the sugar that's just right out there in the open versus uh, having to go up through a little tiny slot in the middle of the inner cover um, you know if it doesn't hit that slot to go up through and wick out then what's it going to do it's going to condense on the inner cover and possibly drip back on the bees. So that would be my only concern um, to maybe consider moving that inner cover up 
um, above your your mountain camp method. So um, I tell you, I'm gonna have to give you three out of five hive tools, and uh, I think you did a super job with your setup there. Um, looks quite cold as it is here right now. Um, good job. Pat yourself on the back. Three out of five hive tools. And you know what? I'm going to give you a ladybug. What the heck? Three hive tools and a ladybug for you. Good job. Okay, so let's move on to this last one here. Um, location. Southern Ontario. Average temps. 13 degrees Fahrenheit to 28 degrees. Estimated food stores. 85 pounds. Desired food stores, 100 pounds. And that's for a 10 frame hive. Number of hives, he's got six hives. Didn't really ask for that information, but that's pretty neat to include. Short description. Double deep 10 frame colony with a one inch shim on top for sugar cakes. Top has two inch foam insulation and three quarter inch insulation on three sides, plus on the top front. And I think what he's talking about there is, you can see that little strip of insulation going across the face. And I think that's what he's talking about there. It's got two three quarter inch holes to provide insulation into the roof. Uh, if you look at the top, if we look at this picture, you can see the two holes he's talking about. There is also a cutout in the foam to fit a feeder jar inside vented roof. Thought is to avoid any condensation on the inner cover and to keep the hive warm and negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Custom bottom boards. Hives are rotated 90 degrees from the typical setup and can be worked from the back. Who's working them in the winter time though? Hmm, interesting. Lower entrance is three inches by 5 sixteenths of an inch to prevent mice. Screen bottom with Coroplast under it, which Coroplast is pretty much uh, political sign material. It's that plastic material. Um, kind of looks like cardboard, but it's plastic. Use this setup for two full winters with great success. This will be my third. Very impressive. I tell you, um, looking at your, your picture here, um, it looks very clean. I like the look of it, and I like how you use the pavers instead of... Uh, cinder blocks to set your colony on. That looks a lot more secure than uh, cinder blocks. But at the same time, I kind of question how much air they get in the winter time. Maybe you change something there. I don't know. Okay. My likes. I like all the steps you take to keep the colony warm with insulation. Since you lack a wind break. You look like your hives are out there in the, in the wide open. Looks very clean and organized, like I mentioned. It's not going to do nothing for your colonies to keep them safe during the winter, but it does look very clean and organized. Um, I like the added space for the sugar cakes, and I love that you've got ratchet straps holding them together just because of the stronger winds in the winter time. Um, dislikes and concerns. And this has been hitting across all these videos or all these setups this morning. No metal mouse guard. It's just wood. And that's a concern to me, and I've already mentioned why, so I won't run through that again. But uh, please give that some consideration for the future. Um, I know it's worked great for you, and this is going on your third winter. You ain't had any problems. But let me tell you, it only takes one, and your luck will change. One mouse determined. Um, other concern is is the colony tilted is any moisture that lands on that uh, bottom board running back into the colony or is it running away from the colony um my next concern nothing to collect moisture like dry sugar or wood shavings like there would be in a quilting box maybe this uh top cover outer cover I guess that you're using um, is enough I don't know I don't have any experience with a outer cover that looks like that um, it's very unique looking um, also looks expensive 
you have very many colonies and you've got to make top covers like that. But hey, if it's working for you, it's working for you. I'm going to give you, you know, I, I'm feeling like I'm, I'm in a good mood and uh, I'm going to give you three hive tolls. And since I gave the last two people a ladybug, you're going to get a ladybug too, damn it. Everybody gets three hive tolls and a ladybug today. It's just the kind of mood I'm in today. And uh, just so happens that these colonies, they did a pretty good job. Um, like I said, I'd like to see them maybe think about them things I mentioned and think about tweaking their setup just a little bit. So that is it for today on Rate My Winter Hive Setup. To learn how to submit a photo of your hive, go down in the video description and all the information can be found down there. And who knows, in weeks to come, I could be raiding your very colony. Thanks for watching JC's Bees. <laughs>